Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Abba. We thank you. We open our hearts to all of heaven's desires for us. We open our hearts to everything you want. And we want to align ourselves with you. We want to align ourselves with the word, with your word, with your desires. We want to express you in every way you choose and we choose to be with you. And we love you, Jesus. We worship you and we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to keep on moving, to keep on speaking and to manifest through us in this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, so for those of you who were not here last week, um, I was talking about um, about um, about union, you know, union with God and with each other and what it really means and why it is that we can't all ever be seeing one thing the same way, right? Because God created us all unique. We all have different minds and different grids and different um, uh, different life experiences and, you know, education and all that stuff. And so we are definitely going to be seeing things different, each one of us. But I was saying how, like, the beauty of open heaven has been the unity in the diversity, you know? that we don't all have to have the same political views or the same um, upbringing or be from the same part of, of the country or the world to be able to agree. Yeah, because we have a foundation, which is Christ. Yeah? And so um, I was saying that, you know, if, if this, this sounds so weird, but actually everybody's idea of what truth is is a little different to someone else's, yeah? And I was also saying that there's one truth that stands, and it is that Aramaic word, sharara, which, which, which is divine truth, you know? And so just basing today's word on that, and we're just going to go a little deeper. And, you know, guys, we each have a purpose and a calling, right? And if we're not aware of that, then we are stepping into that, you know? Uh, uh, one of the things that God gave us as focus here at Open Heaven, one was that we were a um, ministry of transformation. And that means that when we come in, there's something that begins to churn and burn and align and bring us deeper into what God has for us. You know, and, and those of you who've been here a while, like you can, you can feel the strength of something rising inside you, right? Like a, 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 a calling, like, would you say that, Rachel? Yeah, like, it's not like you didn't know, like you, you knew you had a sense of what was in your heart, and then you just, you just become a part of the body, and then you just begin to be, you know? And so the first, one of the things was that we had called to help people transform and also help people to step into their pr prophetic destiny, into their prophetic calling. And so, Guys, I feel like here we're meant to, or church in general, is meant to model the triune God. And when I was thinking about this, when I was jotting down notes, I got this word triunity, you know? <laughs> it's the absolute union between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triunity. And that's what God wants to see genuinely displayed, manifested amongst us. You know, and all the, the activities or the, like the, the events or whatever we like to call them are really not something that we're trying to engineer or, or, or like glue people together externally. It's something that's happening because of the presence of the triune God. Hey, Ryan. Good to see you too. What's up? <laughs> By the way, did you guys see the joke in last year, last month's newsletter about how Jesus supped with his disciples? <laughs> he was standing with all his, his disciples in the going, sup. 
He was saying, sup, and they were all going, sup. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we were talking about the purpose of church, you know, and the purpose of, and how we um, are called to display the unity of the triune God. And, and I was saying, the word came to me, try unity. You know, that as we, um, as we continue to gel together, hopefully not smell together, but as we, I'm sorry guys, I'm a punster. <laughs> and this just, I, I don't mean to, it just comes, right? And if one person laughs, it's like fuel, it just, it keeps going. <laughs> Stop laughing, you guys. But at least there's joy in the house. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, the triune God. Guys, that we begin, you know, we see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are different, distinct personalities. But they're one. You know, it's just so um, impossible to explain in a theoretical sense. But the truth is that when you, when you encounter God, when you... When you when you go into that kind of depth of God, you realize that He is abs God is absolutely one, yeah. and it's it's like um, you know I've heard Kat Kerr speak about it. If any of you have heard Kat Kerr, she's this uh, filled with God, and you know she keeps uh, having visitations in heaven. But she was saying that it's like you know like like packing something into one container, like like angels all pack into each other. You know, like if people say, oh, there's angels on all the seats. In actual fact, it doesn't work that way because they are dimensional and not dependent on space. So you can pack thousands of angels into one little little spot, okay? And, and it's the same with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be and we know that because the word says that God, you know, Jesus said, you in me and I in you, you know? And so... Um, um, that's what the triunity is about, you know? And so church is meant to display the oneness of God. And, you know, the sad thing is that all of us have had difficult experiences throughout our walk in churchianity, right? And so, or I should say churchdom. But, um, but what happens is that kind of closes off that place that is naturally created to fellowship and to know triunity within the body of Christ, yeah? But, but it's never too late, guys, for us to just begin to open our hearts and allow God to manifest union through our lives. Does that sound like a possibility? Yeah? See, God is so multidimensional, and when we begin to walk in oneness, see, you realize the, the um, power of, of Trinity in every level of church life, so when you think of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay, and, and the church is Father, Jesus, and the bride, yeah? Or uh, in each of us, in a, in a unitary level, it's body, spirit, and soul. Or it's the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. There's always a triunity. There's always a triune being. And God is calling us to go deeper and deeper into the deepest place that we could possibly go, which is, which is really a, a thing that we can never really do in the end because God is so infinite. And we will be going and going and going, thirsting after him, and we will be just getting deeper and deeper and more and more and more into him. That sounds so awesome to me. Yeah? No more bored Christians. Yeah? Hallelujah. So, guys, you know, I think we as a church have been called as part of a, a move across the world, you know, to, to push boundaries, to break boundaries in a way, to scale boundaries, to, to, to create new frontiers, and to be pioneers in the things of God. And if that sounds crazy, see, you know, why, would, why should it be? You know, I was thinking about how, how, how set we get in our, in our thinking about God, in how we interpret the word, and how we have allowed certain things to be cast in stone, me included. I mean, I'm just, just learning to break some, 
streets and walls. See, when you think of how hundreds and hundreds of years ago, people, people said that the earth was flat, okay? But then they got proof to the contrary and they moved on from that understanding, okay? And then knowledge about the earth and the world and the science and the environment just grew so much. And, and now we have a, a huge symphony of beautiful, glorious revelation about the planets and the stars and about the earth and where we fit in. And, and all that to say, you guys, in every field, in every, every field, we have progressed in the sense of our understanding. It's not that those things ever changed. We just got upgraded in our revelation. In everything, just think about health and fitness and how people constantly change what our understanding is about what's good for the human body and how we can elongate life and live in health and strength. So why is it that in, when it comes to knowledge of God and knowledge of the word, which, is, which we, we see from the Bible is a progressive word, an ever-progressing word, ever-proceeding word. Why is it that we have cast it in stone and we say, this is how it is, this is who God is, this is how he is, this is what he will and he will not do, and don't even talk about it or think about it because that would be heresy. And what's happening all the time is that we are limiting ourselves. Limi and guys, I'm speaking from my own life. Because every day has become a new discovery. How can I say I know God and just stay in the same old, same old? You know, Manju and I have been married 36 years. When Peter went to college, you know, at the beginning of 2011, we suddenly realized how much of a force Peter had been in keeping us together. You know? Like he was our common ground, and we never realized that we had really, because we met when we were super young. You know, I was 17. I was 21 when we married. Manju was a lot older, don't tell him I said. No, he's, he's three years older than me. But he was like, you know, a man, and I was just a kid. <laughs> no, no, what I mean was Manju was super, Manju was mature. He'd been living abroad in, you know, in, co in school in England and college and everything, and, and I was just a sheltered child. <laughs> no, only kidding. Only, that's a total lie. I was, a ab I was an absolute brat. <laughs> but now what I'm saying is, guys, so when Peter went to school, we suddenly realized that, wow, we had got set in our knowledge of each other. I thought I knew him, everything about him. He thought he knew everything about me. But no, I had been growing up. I had been changing. I had expanded in my interests and my understanding and my knowledge and my skills and what I liked and didn't like. And same with Manju. But you know what? It was so awesome to get to know each other all over again and build a whole different new relationship and dynamic between us. And guys, I really believe that this is what God wants to do in each of our lives. Even if I've been a Christian for one year and I've stepped into a routine, if I've routinized my walk with God, then there's something that's grown stale, something that I have cast in stone to say, this is how God relates with me. This is how I relate with God. This is what I know about him. And this is how it has to be. Yeah? But he's calling us to different. He's calling us to push past a boundary, to scale a wall, to create a new normal, a new reality in your walk with God. Yeah? yeah. Hallelujah. See, I, I believe as, and you know, when I say open heaven, I mean every one of us who's right here, you know, sitting here, that God has called us guys to be something. That none of us was meant to just sit, to, to be born and just sit somewhere and just roll through life. That every single one of you in whatever you're doing, God has called you to be somebody. 
to impact, to have an effect on the world, to impact your own world, your school, your kids that you teach. God has called you to be not just anybody, but to be somebody powerful, to be somebody for somebody who is the revival, somebody who is the reformation, somebody who is the encounter that somebody's praying for. Amen? Because you and I are the only church that some people will ever know. Yes? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So last week, you know, we were talking about how transformation is so much a part of life, so much a part of our walk with God and, and, what, and, and so essential, but that we can't experience transformation unless we have a revelation. Yeah, I was saying revelation brings a renovation. Yeah? And, and that unless, but you, we can't have a new revelation, guys. We can't have an upgrade unless we're willing to open our hearts. Yeah? See, in, in the church, when, when now in the, in, the, in the New Testament church, when um, the Holy Spirit first fell, like people were weirded out, remember? The, the, peop the Jewish people in the synagogue thought everybody was drunk. And, and it, was like, it was like, wow, scandal going on here. These guys are drinking first thing in the morning and making a noise. Yeah? But God was bringing about a transformation. And you guys, I, I really believe this is what he wants to do in our, each of our lives, that we go from glory to glory, that we never stay in the same... Re you see, if I'm still praying the same way I prayed 10 years ago, that means my revelation has just stayed where it was. Yeah? Because even how I pray, how I relate with God has changed because of the dynamic of what's going on in my walk with him, in my revelation about him. Yeah? And so, you know, it's a good thing to just stop and ask yourself when you are relating with God, when you are praying, like, why am I doing this? Or why am I saying this? I remember how I was in such a routine about putting on the armor of God at one stage, you know? And I would just go through the motions every single day, super religiously, because I would feel like I was not covered if I didn't do all of that. Clipping everything on and, you know, tying up things and putting my helmet and everything. But it's a qualitative thing, right? It's not something, of, of course, we can do things as prophetic gestures, which do enable us and build our faith, and, and that's beautiful, and I still do that. What I mean is if, I, if I'm doing it every day with that religious thought that if I don't do it, you know, there's something uncovered and exposed. Yeah? yeah? So, so if, if, if the just from to understand that for me was a step, was a big jump. It was a scaling of a wall that I had hemmed myself into. Yeah? So the thing is, guys, if I ever say, if I'm ever saying that, wow, this can't be, I'm saying that I know everything. Yeah? And I believe only God knows everything. Remember how Jesus said, greater things than, than these they will do, you know, in the book of John. Because he, was, he knew that things were going to go off the charts. When the Holy Spirit came, that there was going to be potential for every transformation, for every breakthrough, for every kind of miracle. Yeah? Everybody awake? Yeah. So let me read to you, you guys, from this prayer. I think uh, Wendy read it in the communion last week. Uh, John 17. And let me start at verse 11. Thank you, Lord. As we just relate to relate to our body here. You know, last Friday, Kate was saying that, I won't mention, don't worry, but Kate was saying how she, you know, she, Kate is a scientist, and how they had created something amazing in their lab last week. She just casually said, today I, today I made this. Is it okay to say? She said, today we made skin. Oh, wow. 
you know, it's like some super high technology thing because it's real skin that uh, that um, that actually hair can grow from. Oh Apparently, nobody, only one other scientist has done that. And how cool is that, <laughs> right? What if what if we demonize that and said only God is meant to do things like that, and and no, 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 you shouldn't. But no, that's that's a a development of knowledge and understanding and science, all these things, it's its the wisdom that God has given Miss Wisdom, <laughs> right? And so, her last name is Wisdom. Um, and so, um, what if we didn't, we, we, we didn't like, you know, we didn't regard that as something powerful and important and from God? Yeah? Same thing applies to the, the word. You know, another example that, I, I recently saw is a, of a, a little toddler who the mother has, you know, said is back on uh, nursing like a newborn. Okay, it's like, for me, I would think that's a backward step. If I'm choosing to have more mother's milk than food, I mean, who, who would turn down food, <laughs> right? A juicy burger or something, not me, because I'm not really a meat lover, but you know. Uh, but what I mean is, guys, we need to be continuously looking to progress, to go higher, to go deeper, to understand a little more who God is. Yeah? So anyway, John chapter 17. Uh, let's read from verse 11. So this is that beautiful three-sectioned um, prayer where Jesus first prays, you know, to the Father, and he's talking about himself, then he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for the disciples that the disciples will make. Yeah? But he says in verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, because he was already, you know, more there than here. Uh, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Okay? This is what, oneness is such a priority with Jesus, yeah? He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So guys, what I want to bring out from this word, from this scripture, is some of the things that God is giving us as ways that we cultivate unity, common ground, yeah, the truth is that, like I said, there are so many doctrinal issues and beliefs and, and things that people understand and th people that people follow, you know, who teach different things. And, and not everybody is going to be 100% agreed. But there's so much in the word, so much in our walk in God that we can take and hold as common ground. And this is just a few of them, yeah? So Jesus is saying, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. And, I, and I, what I was feeling was like, this is, the, this is one of those things, the name of Jesus. Do we not all claim his name? That's why we call ourselves Christians, right, Christians? Because we claim his name, yeah? And then he says... Um, mm, Do, 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 do. Uh, okay, let me read it all then. Uh, he says, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. What about joy? Do you think joy is a common ground we could have? Yeah? yeah? Woohoo! I have given them your word. What about the word? And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Has anyone been hated just for having the word? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Just for having Jesus? Mm -hmm. Just for walking in him? Anybody been hated? No? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's great. That's good. Not that you're hated, <laughs> but not that you're hated, but that you that you see, right? It's an identification with Jesus. The truth is that. The deeper you go in God, the more you're likely to attract some accusations and some negative comments <laughs> on your Facebook page or something worse. 
And it says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Remember how Pontius Pilate said what is truth? Yeah? Remember last week I was talking about Sharara? And Sharara is the divine truth. It's the truth, the truth of God. It's not truth as how I see it or truth that, you know, Tanisha may see it or the truth that Steve might see in the sense of the interpretation of how I see a situation or a thing or a, even the word. But it's God, the word made flesh and manifesting among us. It's who he is. Yeah, and the, it's saying here, um, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. You know, this, this is why I always feel like, you know, guys, we can never go far away from the word. We, we need the word. Because only the word is going to keep us on track. Only the word is going to keep us founded deeply in Jesus Christ. Yeah, and it's saying... Um, uh, talking about the word as truth, that, that divine truth, the shirara, that is what we encounter when we come into God. Yeah? And he says in, um, mm, again he says in verse 21, you know, in 20 he says, I do not pray for these alone, but, for, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, here we go again, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. See again that, that um, the threesome, the Father, Jesus, and the Bride. Yeah? That they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Yeah? And when he's talking about one, he's not saying one person alone, right? He's talking about one family, one unit, one body of people who come in, one, in oneness through Christ. You know, that, yeah, I have warts, you have uh, warts, somebody has some scratchy places, somebody is, has a little rough edges, but that we learn to be one. Yeah? Yes? Or a scratchy beard, whatever, a forester, yeah? And then he says, um, he says, uh, whoa, let's see. I'm looking for the place where he talks about, um, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. And he says, Father, I desire that they also may be, also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. You know, this is just giving us a whole picture of the eternal sense of who God is, of who Jesus is. That none of this happened within a timeline. See, we're always understanding the word or interpreting the word according to our own timeline, according to our own grid, according to the way we think. But what about if we stop to see that this is a divine thing, you know, it's an it's a eternal perspective. It's an eternal perspective that everything God is talking about is coming from another point of view. How about that? He's saying that even before the foundation of the world. All this was settled and decided, and Father had already appointed all of this. Isn't that amazing? It's just mind-blowing. You guys awake? Yes. How awake? Yes. Oh, good. See, guys, I just, I just, um, it, this went, took me back to, Luke chapter 24, where, um, where in, uh, 
and I'm just jumping to another scripture, but Luke chapter 24, where the, the disciples were walking from uh, to Emmaus and how Jesus came alongside them, the risen Jesus. And we're told how, you know, they constrained him and they told him to abide with them and everything. And when he, then they, they sat down to break bread. And we're told in verse 30 that when he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, verse 31 says, then their eyes were open. And they knew him. Sorry, Steve. The, the fog lifted. The veil just got moved aside. Their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? You know, and then later in verse 35, it says, and they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. How cool is that? So you know what I, what the Lord was showing me was every time we break bread as a as a family. Every time we break bread as a family, of course, there's a million things that are happening in the spiritual realm every time. But every time we break bread, guys, Jesus Christ is made known to us. That scripture says that how they told the people told the other disciples what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. See, everything, guys, that we're doing has a purpose. One of the things that, you know, three things that the Lord showed us we should never move away from when, we, when open heaven was born. One was uh, the word. One was communion every time we gather on a Sunday on like, you know, some places where it's like once a month. And the third thing was to pray in tongues. And, and, and I really believe this is how we're meant to stay on track, you know? But the communion is so mystical. Yeah. Because when we take, we are getting to know him more. It's, it's the, it's the uh, consummation of a marriage between Jesus and his bride. That every time we, we um, partake and we take together, we partake of each other, we partake of him, we are coming deeper into a revelation of who he is. It's the most intimate of communions, guys, because he is coming into us. His, his DNA becomes ours. You know, I really and truly believe that we are super beings. Like 10 years ago, if I said that, people would think you were like, weirdo. <laughs> but the truth is we are. We just need to remember it and to start to live like it. Every time we take of the bread and the cup, every time we eat of the flesh and blood, we are partaking of his nature. We are taking part of him and of each other. You guys are so quiet today. Please. OK. <laughs> Good. So, and so what, what we're seeing is that you know revelation is happening in, at, in, through multiple levels, in everything, like through the communion, through the word, through the worship, through the claiming of his name, you know, that the blood is coming into us and manifesting in multiple different ways, and whichever way that you need it or I need it. God is beginning to ma manifest, yeah? The blood, the communion, that truth of God that is coming deeper into us, that sharara, as we encounter, yeah? All good, Ryan? Praise the Lord. And then, guys, you know, the other thing that came to me was the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I just was saying how the the things that God didn't want us to move, move away from was the word, which we stay in, and communion. And why pray in tongues? Because that constantly brings us back to communing with the Holy Spirit. And you know, guys, I want to encourage you. He's, he's so amazing. He is so part of the triune, the triunity 
but still his own distinct person. Some people refer to Holy Spirit as she because he is the he, as I'm saying, is the um, is the nurturing and the mother aspect of God, God the Father, and God the nurturer, and God Jesus the Son. You know that it that it's the model of every kind of life on the earth you know, family on the earth. But the Holy Spirit is so real, and, and he is really is looking to build relationship with each of us. And I really believe that he has a very special place here at Open Heaven. We want Holy Spirit. We really do want Holy Spirit. We really honor Holy Spirit. Yeah, my life totally changed when I came to know Holy Spirit. And he became so real to me that... I would just I would just feel him in a very special way from the time I was a very new baby Christian. And guys, I I really believe if we are to grow in our walk, and you know, by the way, it's Holy Spirit who brings transformation. Right? It's He who brings a revelation of the word. It's it's Holy Spirit who brings us deeper into God and helps us to grow and remember the word and to love each other and to forgive and do all those things, which we just could not ever do in the flesh, yeah? So even at open heaven, it's that three-pronged thing. It's the, it's the word, communion, tongues. You know what I mean? That, that model of three. And just bringing us deeper and closer into God, yeah? Into the Sharara. And, and I often think that, you know, people don't, churches don't give Holy Spirit his place because in the epistles, often Paul starts by saying, talking about Father and Jesus, and I used to wonder why he's not mentioning Holy Spirit. And I really think it's because, you guys, it was Holy Spirit inspiring the writing. You know what I mean? It was Holy Spirit and, and Paul writing the epistles, and so that's why he wasn't mentioning Holy Spirit. Well, in other words, he wasn't mentioning himself. Just the way when John was writing, John would say, refer to himself as the beloved disciple and not mention his name. Yeah? But most of all, it's Holy Spirit who draws us deeper and Holy Spirit who, is, who, is, um, who we can have a, a, a different dialogue with, encounters with. Yeah? Calling us deeper. That's what he wants to do, to, to transform us, to strengthen us, to make us more like Jesus. Yeah? It's all about that mystical union, you guys. Last week, I read that scripture from uh, Ephesians chapter 5, which I always love to read. But let me just remind you of it again, where it says, it's talking about husbands and wives, but really for, for, for the church, God is showing us that every, for every, every relationship is based on the, or organization is based on the, um, on the, bride, the bridegroom bride paradigm. You know, that in, in, a, in, a, in a body like ours, the, the pastors love and cherish the people and um, cover them and bring the word to them, yeah? And that, that's how it is at every level, you know? And so it says, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Isn't that amazing? Just imagine being the flesh and the bones of Jesus. Think about that. The flesh and the bones of Jesus. So powerful. It's a real deal, you guys. And it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And he says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. It's the mystical union. It's the mystical journey that we're on. And that is to progress in intimacy with God and progress in intimacy with each other. And, and, and that when the going gets tough or rough or there's a disagreement that we don't disengage because I can never cease to be a hand. If I'm a hand in the body, 
I have to stay in the body yeah. so I can function in my calling. Yeah? So are you ready, you guys? That's what I want to ask you. I really believe this is, this is a whole brand new season for us and that we're going to see God just changing things in our own hearts, you know, bringing forth new, awesome, beautiful things in our life, in our workplaces, in our relationships, bringing forth the new. And what I want to ask you is, are you ready? Are you ready for us as a body to go deeper into God, to plunge in without looking back, without um, holding a, 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 a law that's cast in stone and not letting it go, but to release ourselves to God and allow him to bring us deeper because, because he's saying, hey, you guys, you kids, you're grown up, and I trust you. Every time we have a revelation, you guys, it's not for us to run away. It's for us to dialogue with God. It's an invitation to encounter. It's an invitation to discussion. And that's the least that you and I can do when there's something we don't understand. I'm learning to do that. Because I have felt stretched and pushed in lots of ways these past few years. But I press in and I dialogue with Holy Spirit. And then I feel the comfort of what he's showing me. And that, yes, I am teaching you this, and I am taking you further. Yeah? Are you ready? Yeah. Ready to grow as one body? Yeah? Just think about how weird it would look if just my hand keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. Or my ears. I have a problem there anyway. <laughs> I always had big ears as a kid. Um, and then I grew into my ears, so I know the feeling. <laughs> But just imagine if one part of your body just kept growing, okay? And that's what's happening in the body of Christ. That maybe one, one sub part of the body, you know, like a group or one individual in a group will be so filled with God and so pursuing the things of God. And is so sh that person, I said she, but really that she or he or that person would be just getting s bigger and stronger, like, like one big leg, you know? And then, but the rest of the body is the same size. How crazy would that be? And that's why God is calling us as a body to hunger and thirst for him, to go hard after him, to allow the word to wash us and reshape us and form us and make us new, that we will grow the whole body to fit the huge head that we carry the head who is Jesus Christ. Yeah? Yes. Hallelujah. So we don't look like cartoons. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, that brings us back a full circle to say, okay, so then what is church? What is church? It's, it's not just a social place, though. That is just awesome and wonderful that we can do fun things and relate with each other and have fellowship together and everything. But what is church? It is that manifestation of God on the earth. It's that connection place. It's that interface, yeah, between heaven and earth. It's that contact point that people can encounter God when they encounter you. And it is definitely not a building or a physical place. It's you and you and you and you and you on the move. Yeah? Yes. Bringing people into the warmth and the truth, in the sharara, the revelation of who God is. Yeah? Yes. Hallelujah. So what we really are is a growing, morphing body of super beings. <laughs> super beings. That's what you are. Just sit up straight and just feel like a super being. Take a big, deep breath. Let, let like strength and energy flow into you. Definitely, definitely some of you look like super beings. Super being. That's so cool, you guys. So filled with God. So anyway, let's close with this scripture that I'd like to read to you, um, because truly there is a time coming where we, we will all be in agreement, you know, uh, like it says in um, Ephesians chapter 4 that 
um, or, you know, even gifts and everything were given to people for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that a time is coming when we are all going to be in perfect agreement. That would be pretty awesome to see. But until then, until then, you guys, we focus on union through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the name of Jesus, through the word of God, the communion, the power of the body. Yeah? the power of the Holy Spirit who draws us all together. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I think I heard a little voice say hallelujah from inside the room. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands up, Lord, guys, and just, just yield to Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are, we are up for this, God. We are ready for this. We want this. We want you. We want deeper depths. We want, to, we want to go deeper into the transformation that you have. We're good with that. We want more of your word. We want deeper understanding. Lord, we thank you. We ask you to take us higher. And most of all, we yield to you. We want to do this with you. We want to partner with you. We want to be one with you. And we choose to be one with each other. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. And we receive of you afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You know, guys, the amazing thing about transformation is, I think every time we hear, hear a word and we are like even, even unconsciously agreeing with it, you know, it, it's like your heart has aligned then, and you have opened yourself to receive whatever awesome thing is flowing through that word, you know? So how much more when you consciously say, yes, amen, this is for me, and I choose it, yeah? It's going to be so much more manifested in your life. Hallelujah. So I bless you guys. You have a blessed powerful, fruitful week.